Hey guys, welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun crayon art folio. So to grab the pattern for this project, just head over to my blog, which is linked below and also in the information icon. So this is a paid pattern and is available at my Etsy shop and my Craftsy. All the money for this project does go to help make my YouTube channel better and give you more and better content. So thank you so much if you already have purchased it and let's get into the tutorial. So for this tutorial, I will be using cotton fabric, medium weight interfacing, and for my closure, I'm using snaps, but you can of course substitute for Velcro also if you are afraid that your little ones won't be able to use the snaps. So cut out all your pieces. You should have two of the main body of the bag pieces, one crayon slot, two slip pocket pieces, two pieces for the straps, but you could also substitute those for a thick ribbon, um, two pieces for the little flap that goes over it, and then that's it. So I just went ahead and ironed on all of my interfacing. And now I will start working on the crayon piece. So this is the piece that will turn into all the little slots. So I'm just gonna take it and fold it in half lengthways and I will sew down the long edge. So this pattern is based on a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so just remember that when you go to do all your seams. And now I will flip this piece right side out and then press. We're gonna work on all the interior pieces first and then we can assemble it all in the end. So now I'm just going to do a top stitch. I'm gonna do it on the folded edge and then I will set this piece aside and start working on our slip pockets. So this navy blue fabric was a little bit thicker so I didn't put interfacing on it but all the rest of the pieces does have interfacing. So I'm just gonna take it and I'm going to fold it in half and then I will do that with my second piece. This is the smaller slip pocket. And then I will just take it over to my sewing machine and again do another top stitch on the folded edge. This just makes things look a little bit more prettier and helps keep it nice and folded. So after that we're going to work on our little flaps. So I'm going to take the two pieces, put them with the right sides together, and I will sew all the way around leaving the short end open. So I'm going to go very slow when I go around the curve. If you're not comfortable doing curves, you could make this tab just a rectangle. If you're new at curves, then of course this will give you a little bit of practice, but just, you know, take your time, go slow, lift your presser foot every couple, you know, couple centimeters and just, you know, try to make that nice and smooth. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to cut little notches into the curved edge and that will just help make it lay flat when we go to turn it right side out. So I like to use a chopstick or a knitting needle when I can't get my fingers into the places I want them to go. So now after I've pressed that, I'm just going to do a chop stitch just to make it look prettier and it helps keep it nice and folded. And now I'm going to work on my straps. So like I said before, if you wanted to use a thicker ribbon, you could totally just skip this part. But if not, we're going to take the long pieces and fold them lengthways and then sew along the edges with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to flip them right sides out. And then we will do a top stitch on either side just to make it look like a strap. So now I'm going to start placing my pieces. The first one I'm going to work on is the crayon piece. And I'm going to place that on the lining about two and three quarters down and then sew the bottom of it. So the part that's closest to the center of the lining piece. That's just gonna hold it in place and then we are going to um, create our little card slots. So I just measured from the center and measured one inch from the center away. Should leave you about a half an inch on either side and then we will sew all those little slots. After that, we're going to take our slip pockets and then place those with the large one first and then the smaller one with the folds on the inside, making sure all of our raw edges are lined up. And then we will use our straps. My straps are a little long right now, so just disregard that. They will be the correct 
um, length in the pattern and um, I'm just going to place those and then place my little tabby piece in between one of these straps. So just a little revision, I am going to put the little tab piece on the side that has the slip pockets, not where the crayon slots were. So just disregard where I put it and put it on the other side. So then I just put the last piece on top and then I sewed all the way around leaving a gap in between the strap that didn't have the little tab piece. Now I'm going to flip the whole thing right side out. And then I'll poke out the corners with my chopstick and then press. So after that, then you can just close up the little hole that's in between the straps. So if you want to do a top stitch, you can do that. Or you can do an invisible stitch or a ladder stitch. I will have a video linked down below if you have never done that before. But a top stitch will do it just fine, especially if you're using matching thread and it will be hidden with a tab once it's closed. I didn't show you how I put on the closure because I did snaps, but if you want to do Velcro, then of course just sew on a piece of Velcro onto the tab and then close the bag and then see where it falls and then you can put the other piece of Velcro on the actual body of the bag. And you might need to move the slip pocket out of the way just so that you can sew it, but um, it's a lot easier to do that on that side. That's why I ended up moving where I put the um, tab piece. So I will have more instructions and photos over at my blog so if you have any difficulty following this video you can go over there and check out the pictures and when you're over there you can check out some of my other crayon storage tutorials. Um, I made a little art folio and then also some little crayon and pencil crayon rolls. So go over there. There are some free patterns for these particular ones. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and turn your bell notifications on to be alerted of future tutorials. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!